I could probably sell paintings if I painted what people wanted instead of what I wanted. Uh, I do the sci-fi fantasy stuff, and most folks don't want that hanging in, the, in their living room. Um, this tree frog I'm doing uh, is based off of a reference photo. I just you kind of briefly saw it there. And I also did this exact same frog as an acrylic painting, and that will pop up here in about uh, 30 seconds. But um, um, I do like the frog. It's very cute. It's very, it's, this is probably one of my most popular paintings I did. And I don't know, know if it was how I painted it. I think it's basically because it's a tree frog, and people just like certain subject matter. Um, I don't know if I just could just, you know, assembly line these things out. It, I don't know if people would even buy them. I just don't know. But I do like this frog, uh, tree frog. It's, it's kind of cute. Uh, I did the outlines with my 8H uh, pencil. Now I'm going in with my 2B, and I'm just putting in some light uh, shading, some cross cross hatching here. Um, my goal here was to do pencil and ink and a little bit of watercolor. And uh, there, there's some pretty scary moments in this painting. If you're an artist, you'll know what I mean. So basically, I'm just blocking in some, some uh, color areas so I know where later on to bring my ink. Um, my goal wasn't to go too dark, and I don't think I did too bad. Um, I wasn't trying to go cartoony, but if you've seen the reference of this, the, the, the reference is kind of cartoony. It's really super cute. Um, it, it, when I went to give away my paintings or a bunch of them, that was one that I definitely held back for myself. Um, I'm going to keep that one. Um, but the tree frog is kind of cool because it has a red and there's some green. And in the background, you can do all kinds of sorts of fun things with it. And it, it just looks kind of weird. But here I am. I'm just kind of basically blocking in uh, some tree bark, some shadows ar uh, around the, the bark and around the legs. Trying to give it some texture. Because so, in the painting... Um, I was able to give it some really good texture because I did five layers of painting and I did it all with, with uh, some gloss or uh, watered down acrylics and I kept layering it and layering it and layering it. Okay, here comes my painting right here. This is what the actual uh, acrylic painting looks like. It's not very big, but um, you, can, you can see how I, I did that versus how this is going to turn out because this is on paper. I'm only using watercolor um, watercolor paints and I didn't use any ink on this. I did use ink but in the, in the painting I used a sharpie pen to outline everything. With this I'm just using that 8H pencil so it's not as dark but it's, it's, it's thick. Now I'm putting in some of my little uh, signature background plants. I, I can doodle these things all day long. Um, they're really fun to do. Um, I do a lot of round contour lines you can see there and I'm thinking I need to Make a, make a composition. I need to fill the background in, do some stuff. Uh, fix up his mouth there, make it look a little bit better. Um, add some more vines. I guess it's vines. He's a tree frog, lives in the jungle, right? So it's a, it's a jungle uh, type background. And um, so I pull my ink out, my India ink. And this is, the, this is where it gets a little tricky because I want to do the India ink first and then put the highlights on. When I, when I did it, my rhinoceros uh, drawing, I did it the other way around, and I thought this would be more effective. So I mixed up, this is like some 40% gray, and I, I don't do a very good job of uh, making my ink palette. It's kind of hard sometimes to tell where the dark is versus the light. I uh, kind of eyeball it and, and do a little test test swatch. Um, so there's a spot in this video a little later where I, I freak out because I kind of went overboard with the darks, and I'll let you know. <laughs> if you're an artist, you'll go, what the heck is he doing there? And I had to scramble before it dried to fix it. But um, right here, I'm just blocking in more color again. The reference photo is just uh, to the top of this page, so I'm, I'm eyeballing that as I'm doing this. Um, if you're an artist, I recommend using reference. Uh, get your hand-eye coordination down. And I will tell you, if you don't use reference, your artwork won't look genuine. It'll look cartoony, and it won't look right. Um, I'm a big proponent of using reference. And unless you really want your stuff to look cartoony, uh, drawing from memory can be a, a, a problem. Okay, now I am outlining. Uh, I don't know if you can hear on the um, audio, there's a train going past my house. Uh, you can hear the... the, 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 the wah, wah. It only lasts for a little bit. We get a train through our town about every 15 minutes. Uh, it usually is a coal train. Uh, so here I am, and the, the, the tricky part here was getting those little fingers outlined. 
And in a way, I didn't want to outline them too much. I wanted to keep it a little bit um, indistinct. Um, I, I didn't want to, to paint this to death. You know, I, I do that with my acrylics. And I have some uh, um, canvases right now on my easel. And I'm getting the itchy to get back into my painting. And um, I plan on getting... Oh, here we go. Look at that. Oops, I think I dipped into the darks there. So now I had to go there and pick some of it up, move it over to the belly to kind of even it out so it didn't look so stark. <laughs> That's a panic moment. You can't erase ink off the page. But, you know, nobody's going to offer me a million dollars to this painting, so it's not no no loss. It's just another one of my YouTube videos. But um, I have an idea for my next painting. Um, my biggest thing about that is uh, I need to take my time and slow down. When I watch myself do these um, videos, I have, I have them sped up, obviously. But in my brain, that's how fast I actually paint. I, I go way, way too fast. I don't, I don't think enough. I don't plan things out. I'm very gestural. I just kind of go for it. And sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes that's a bad thing. And that leg was probably a bad thing because I, I should have uh, checked that ink color out or, or value out before I put it on the page. Okay, so now I've got into my watercolors, and the tree frog has red pupils, which is really kind of cool. So the, it's, it's going to be a three-tone pupil. It's going to be dark red, then there's going to be a pink layer, and then there's going to be a white highlight. And when you're doing uh, beings, aliens, animals, uh, the eyes sell it. And, and, you know, eyes sell it on people, too. So it's very important to nail the eyes. So I put down my basic uh, red Oh, and it's tree frogs. There's no sclera. It's just strictly red. It's really kind of freaky. And there I just put the pink on top of it. So that's the first highlight. And it gets it, this gets three, well, two sets of highlights. The pink, and then it gets a white. Um, now I take my green, and I really water it down. I, I'm not trying to put thick paint on this. I just want to tint the frog just enough green to say it's green. Um, my thicker paint comes later when I do my highlights. So basically right now I'm just blocking in uh, the green and I'm probably using too big of a brush there because I need to get a little bit tighter on the hands. Now do frogs have hands? I don't know what do, what do you call a frog that has fingers. What's it, a hand, palm? It's, it's something. So here I am. This is a thicker paint. I mix the green with a little bit of white and at first I'm thinking, man, that's awfully white. That's But when I was doing my other paintings, I was using straight white and it looked really good. So I thought maybe, you know, I'll just use a lot of white in my green. And I'm thinking, now I'm thinking, that's an awfully bright highlight. Maybe I should have toned it down just a little bit. But too late, I did it, and I think I pulled it out in the end. Um, you got to see how, the, how that turns out, which means you got to stay till the end of the video, of course. So this is a good time to talk about um, uh, sharing the video, liking the video, uh, and making lots of comments. I need comments because I need to know what you think about my artwork. And I don't care if you say I'm terrible, if I need to go back to art school. Um, I just need some communication to know that you guys are out there. Um, so is anything you can say be nice. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't bring this up too. I have a deviant art page and has all of my paintings on it. That's where that frog painting came from. I'm going to put a link to it in this description. So you got, if you guys want to go to, uh, see my, all of my artwork, uh, that's where it's at. I probably have, oh gee, many crime, probably 40 works of art on there. And lots of them, most of them are um, full paintings. I mean, took me days to do layered paintings. Um, I, you guys really should go back to my early stuff on this, on this YouTube channel. Back to my early stuff where you can see how I layer stuff and how much detail I put things in. Um, I, I don't do as much here even though I do think that this frog is fairly detailed. I'm putting in some texture here. And once again, I think I probably went a little bit too dark. But the thing about uh, India ink that's nice with this paper, as it dries, it lightens up a bit. So even that leg down there that I thought was freaky, too dark, it's not bad now. I can, I can live with that. So uh, now I'm putting on some texture onto that tree branch because tree branches have uh, bark. And I want it to look like look like bark, like he's not just hanging onto just a slick banana tree. So, and, and I know that's going to lighten up a bit. So I'm now putting up some leaves in the background. Uh, normally, when you do uh, any kind of 
painting, your darks go in the back, then you highlight, you go dark to light to light to light with your highlights. So I'm going, first of all, I'm going in the background, putting in some just indescript uh, plant life, some, some uh, vines, some leaves, whatnot, because I'm going to go over it later with more of that um, green and red paint. Now I'm using a limited palette, and if you don't know what that means, that means you just pick two or three colors and, and don't use anything else. And there's a trick to that, it, and it looks really good. Uh, it looks less cartoony uh, th than m most works of art because you're, you're limiting yourself. So that red is the same red as his eyes, that green is the same green as his body, but um, it, it, I mix a little bit of white with it, so it's a different value, so it's not exactly the same. So those are the plants or leaves or flowers or whatnot from the background jungle. And right now I'm putting in absolute white highlights, and those you'd be very sparing with. You, you have to just put them on the tips of curves and tips of toes, because if you overdo that with white highlights, you're going to ruin it. Um, it's a highlight scale. You go from 50% all the way up to, to I don't know, if 100% means white, then white, you do it in steps. And um, here I am putting some more highlights on the tree. Um, and I think the picture is kind of coming together now. Uh, when I first started, I was a little bit nervous, but as I go along, I'm actually kind of happy with it. And uh, I'm adding more uh, jungle, more vines, more flowers, more highlights. Um, the frog actually, I think, turned out pretty good. Um, I wasn't sure it was going to work out when, when I started, but right now I'm kind of happy with it. I just need to make sure I don't overdo the background jungle. And here I'm just using some really thinned down um, India ink on a very skinny brush and just kind of adding some more junk, you know, just whatever, just to kind of fill in the background. And um, I think we're getting close to the end because if I do it much more, I'm going to clutter it up and it's not going to look very good. So um, what am I doing here? I am taking some absolute white highlights and adding a little touch of it here and there in the plant just to bring that out because I, want, I don't want it to be blended into the background too far. So that part's done and I'm reaching up for something above and what am I doing? I'm adding the very last highlight on the pupils of the eyes. Absolute white and that makes the eyes pop. And here I'm signing my name, Keith Trim, and I want to thank you. Like, subscribe, share, and all that fun stuff.